Now let's prove the correctness of more interesting functions that use recursion. Here's a function that determines whether a natural number n is even. Of course, there are simpler implementations of this, but we'll use this as an example to get us started. We'll match n with 0 and return true. On 1, we'll return false. And on any other natural number n, well, we'll just deduct 2 from n and then recursively call even. Eventually, we get down to 0 or 1, and then eventually we can decide whether. OK, so what I'd like to claim here is that for all natural numbers n, uh, even of 2 times n is going to be true. Right? You add in a factor of 2, you do have an even number. Now, you know that from mathematics, of course. But this is a piece of code. How do we reason about that piece of code? Well, we can't exactly do it with the equational reasoning we've seen so far. Um, you know, we could do a case analysis and say, well, if n is 0, then it returns true. If n is 1, it returns false. But what about the arbitrary case where we don't know what n is? Then it just is equal to even of n minus 2. And uh, now we have to reason about whether n minus 2 is even or not. Um, we're kind of stuck at that point. What we have here is a case where we want to do a proof about whether a number is even, and that reduces to needing to do a proof about whether a smaller number is even. Hopefully this feels familiar from CS2800, because what we need here is proof by induction. Specifically, weak induction is what we need here as a proof technique. So you'll recall that to do induction or weak induction on natural numbers, what we're trying to do is prove a theorem that says for all natural numbers n, some property p holds of n. And the proof technique we're going to use is induction on n. And there will be two cases in this proof, a base case and an inductive case. In the base case, we're going with the smallest natural number, which is 0. And we're going to show that the property p holds of that natural number 0. In the inductive case, we're going to work with a natural number. I'm going to call it k here. Uh, sometimes people will say m or n prime. I find those difficult to understand in the midst of a video or lecture. So uh, k is nicely different than n, so you can hear the difference in pronunciation. So we're going to say that uh, in the inductive case, we're working with a natural number k plus 1. That's what n is equal to in that. And we need to show that the property p holds of k plus 1. And we get to assume that the property p holds of that smaller natural number k. So if we can show those two things, the base case and the inductive case, then we're allowed to conclude by induction that that property p holds of all natural numbers. So I want to ask you once more to use this proof format, at least for 3110. Uh, and by that, I mean explicitly state what the property p is that you're trying to prove, explicitly state what the base case is, and explicitly state all of that information about the inductive case what the smaller number is, in this case it's k, how it's related to the bigger number n, uh, exactly what the inductive hypothesis is, and exactly what you're trying to show. Doing this will get you in the habit of correctly identifying the induction hypothesis, and I find that's one of the errors that many people make as they are becoming more proficient at induction, is getting that inductive hypothesis wrong. So it might seem like a little bit of bookkeeping that you need to do, it's worth your while to do that bookkeeping. It will keep you on the straight and narrow path for using induction. Let's do an example of this. Let's prove that claim about our function even. So we're trying to prove a property P holds, and that property is that for any number n, even of 2 times n is equal to true. There's a base case, which is where n is 0. In that case, we want to show that property p instantiated on 0. So we want to show that even of 2 times 0 is equal to true. Now we go into our equational reasoning. We start with the left-hand side expression, even of 2 times 0. What does that evaluate to? Well, I'm skipping a couple steps of evaluation here. I don't need to show all of them. Remember, we're trying to be rigorous, but not 100% formal here. 
I know that 2 times 0 will evaluate to 0, and I know that even by its definition, when applied to 0, it matches against 0 and returns true. So that reduces to true. Okay, that's it for the base case. What about the inductive case? My natural number n I'm going to express as a smaller natural number k plus 1. The inductive hypothesis is the property p instantiated on that smaller number. So I get to assume that even of 2 times k equals true. And I want to show the property p on the larger number, which is k plus 1. So I want to show that even of 2 times k plus 1 is equal to true. I'll start on the left-hand side. Even of 2 times k plus 1. Well, how is that going to evaluate? We know how algebra evaluates. We know how numbers work. That's not always the same as how OCaml integers work, right? We know that OCaml integers are only 63 bits. We know that they can overflow. But we're going to ignore those corner cases. We wouldn't have to. It is possible to do formal reasoning about 63-bit um, integers. It's just not something we're going to tackle here because it's harder. So I'm going to justify this by algebra, not exactly by evaluation, uh, because I know that by algebra, this is how numbers ought to work uh, if they weren't limited in size. So by algebra, uh, 2 times k plus 1 is going to be 2 times k plus 2. According to the definition of even, that will evaluate to even of 2 times k. Why? Uh, because even is going to pattern match against the arguments that's passed in. It's not going to be 0 or 1. Uh, because k had to be a natural number here, right? So k was at least 0. Therefore, the value being passed even here is at least 2. So that's going to evaluate to its argument minus 2. That's how even was defined. So now we have even of 2 times k. Well, now we have the inductive hypothesis, or specifically the left-hand side of the inductive hypothesis. And we know that according to the inductive hypothesis, even of 2 times k is equal to true. So I'll take one more step, which is to say that even of 2 times k equals true by the induction. And now I'm done, because I've shown that the left-hand side of what I wanted to show is equal to the right-hand. And furthermore, I'm done with the entire inductive proof at that point, because that was the inductive. So QED. We have now proved that even always returns true when applied to something that you've 